On a cold day in the month of December 2019, a discovery was made. The first human case of COVID-19 was reported by medical officials in the city of Wuhan, China. This virus spread across the nation, then subsequently across the continent. Eventually, it spread across the world. Living every day in fear of becoming one of the numbers on the COVID-19 report. Meeting up with friends and family with a barrier we call a computer screen and praying day by day in hopes of a COVID-19 vaccine. We are all familiar with this story, but what if I told you this virus thing, it will never end? Even if COVID-19 itself was to be eradicated today, we would still be living at risk. Over the past few decades, a lot of new infectious diseases have been emerging, and of these emerging diseases, they have been mostly zoonotic diseases, which means that these are diseases that are transmitted from animals to humans. Out of these zoonotic diseases, a lot of them are rabies, psittacosis, and also filoviruses such as Ebola. COVID-19 is also a zoonotic disease itself. Zoonotic diseases are transmitted through various different methods, one of the most obvious being direct contact with a contaminated animal. These diseases can be contracted through oral transfer, animal bites, and also fluid contaminations of cuts and wounds. However, our harm that we inflict on nature directly proliferates our chances of contracting diseases through this method. How exactly? We are constantly enhancing the greenhouse effect, warming up the Earth's atmosphere, and also consuming resources at a rate that is detrimental to species habitats. From deforestation to forest fires, overfishing, to melting of the sea ice caps. Many animals are forced to leave their habitats in search for food and shelter. Take a look at this polar bear. In contrast to how we usually picture them, playing amongst the Arctic tundras, here we see it searching for food in a pile of human-generated trash. Because they no longer have a place to hunt on and human residential areas are continuing to expand, the probability of, in, of an polar bear and a human interacting will evidently increase, and this will result in an increased chance of virus transmission from these polar bears to humans. Another example of this is extreme climate and weather, such as sudden change of dry season to wet rainfall season. This causes a large production of fruits, and different species such as apes and bats will come together in close proximity to consume these fruits. Diseases can spread across species and evidently increases the chance of it from spreading to human beings. So through all this information, we can conclude with the fact that climate change and health is undeniably interconnected. However, our biggest flaw as a human race is not merely our inability to eradicate such global issues, but it is our inability to draw connections our inability to draw lines between two different topics, and in simpler terms, our misunderstandings when it comes to cause and effect. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a virus itself. This virus is present in our society and will never leave until we recognize its presence. This is the virus of conventional thinking. So I am a high school student, and I study around six subjects, some sciences, some humanities. Ever since a young age, I was taught to classify topics into different subjects. For example, viruses and diseases belong in biology, and climate change and global warming belong in geography or environmental sciences. This causes a lot of students to forget how to apply knowledge from one subject into another. And this is a type of conventional thinking that is called linear thinking. Here in the PowerPoint, you can see a better idea of what I mean. On your left, you can see a diagram of a linear thinking system where A results in B. It's very simple. Global warming results in a rise in temperature. However, this simplicity is essentially the problem here. The simplicity makes it very difficult for individuals to recognize more than one cause and relationship within one topic. However, on your right, you can see a more complex web of uh, relationships. It's called systems thinking. With this complex web, we can denote the fact that global warming results in an increase of temperature, but we don't stop there. Therefore, it causes species to relocate and hence increases the chance for humans and animals to interact. At the end, we could conclude with the fact that it, it, it aids in virus transmission. 
Another example of conventional thinking is only skimming across the topic, uh, sorry, skimming across the surface of topics. The iceberg theory, some of you may have seen it before, some of you may have not. What it essentially represents is the top of the iceberg is the most obvious consequences of an issue, and the bottom of the iceberg is the least obvious. It is very obvious that global warming causes an increase of temperature. It is very obvious that global warming causes negative impacts towards biodiversity. But at the end of the iceberg, once we truly realize and acknowledge the end of the iceberg, that's when we really start to identify the significance of an issue. Today, we can conclude with the fact that conventional thinking is a virus that we must all work together to tackle. However, beyond COVID, beyond vaccines, beyond viruses, beyond global warming, this virus is detrimental to our growth in political, scientific, technological, economical, and societal advancements. Today, I've provided two vaccines for you, one being looking at the end of the iceberg and one being systems thinking. However, just like every other vaccine and virus, it is up to you as individuals to take this cure or not. Thank you.